hurts when it's right there in your ears. That hurts when it's right there in your ears. The devil is with us tonight. Let's get him out of here. The devil. Good evening, everybody. Can we all make our way to our seats and stand as we're getting ready to begin our Wednesday night service? We got a beautiful crowd tonight. 103 last Wednesday. We got another beautiful crowd tonight. Amen. Amen. How good is it to be in the house tonight? How good is it to be in the presence of a mighty God that's never changing? He never changes. He's always here. And he's ready to move tonight, Brother Tripp. He's ready to move. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to get right into prayer tonight. we got a lot we need to pray for. Me and Brother Tripp were just talking. Let's keep the prodigals in mind as we pray tonight. Let's keep them in mind. Who knows what could happen if we have 20, 30 prodigals show back up, Brother Tripp. Who knows? But... We got any prayer requests over here? Yes. Definitely, definitely. Yes, sir. Definitely. Amen. Sister Rita? Amen. Amen. We will do that. Here in the middle, Sister Ellen. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. We'll remember her. We'll remember her. Sister Chrislin? Yes, ma'am. Sister Margaret, Aunt Margaret? Definitely. Yes. Amen. Anybody else in the middle? Sister Maria, Brother David, definitely, definitely, yes, yes ma'am, sorry, sorry, yes ma'am, Brother Shannon, Sister Tia, definitely. Yes, ma'am. Brother Brandon, yes, sir. Definitely, definitely. Brother Jill. Yes, sir. Brother Tripp. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Clap. Sister Amanda. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We got a lot of requests tonight. But the Lord's moving. Even if you don't feel him tonight, he's moving and he's ready to work. He's ready to work. As we go into prayer tonight, let's pray with some faith. Let's have faith that He's going to touch everything that we said, every healing, anything that we need. Oh, Lord, I love you tonight, Jesus. I'm so thankful to be in your presence. We had the sins of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God that raises the dead. Lord, I trust in your resurrecting power, Lord, to touch every situation 
to meet every need. God, I pray for a spiritual healing to come through this place right now. Lord, I pray that everybody under the sound of my voice that needs healing, Lord, that they are healed, Lord. I pray over I pray over families, Lord. I pray that they can be unified, Lord. I pray over surgeries. Anybody that, that may be at the doctor, and I pray over the doctors, Lord. I pray over their decisions and the decisions that they may make. Lord, I just pray that you lead us and guide us. Have your hand upon us, Lord. I pray that we continue to trust in you, Lord. I pray that we continue to seek you in prayer and fasting and studying and reading, Lord. I pray that we we seek to know you more, Lord. I pray that we get a deeper revelation of apostolic doctrine. Lord, I pray for this community, Lord. I pray that this community begin to have a deeper revelation of apostolic doctrine. I pray that politicians begin to make their decisions based off of the revelation of Jesus Christ, the one true God, the only one on the throne, Lord. You're the one we put our faith in. You're the one we take our cares to, Lord. And I believe that you hear this prayer tonight, Lord. And I, I believe that there will be healings and miracles done tonight, Lord. And it's in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. When Israel fled from Egypt's land, God rescued them with a mighty hand. A cloud that guided by the day, a fire by night to show them the way. When Egypt followed close behind, my God already had a plan in mind to drown. were terrified they were dismayed and so they cried lord god have mercy please and bring us through this troubled sea then israel walked upon dry ground in the morning time they saw the enemy drown they began to dance and shout hallelujah he brought us out now i'm dancing on the grave
don't you praise him? If, if you're dancing on the grave of your enemy, why don't you praise him tonight? Why, come on, let's lift him up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Brother David, I was watching a message by Brother Lee Stone King a couple weeks ago. He said one of the only, maybe the only thing we possess is our choices. I'm thankful that I have the liberty and to make the choice to praise Him tonight. I don't want to take that for granted. I'm thankful I can lift my hands to Him. I'm thankful I can call on the name of Jesus tonight. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have so much to be thankful for. As they get, can we get the ways to give up? This prayer works. And I'm sure if you ask around, many will tell you they've experienced that it works. I've experienced that it works. And I have faith. I have faith that it will tonight, too. Ways to give is Giveify. That's the, that's the one I use. It's very, very simple. I've had no problems out of it. We also have PayPal available at RiverbendPentecostals.com. And then cash and checks can be mailed to Riverbend Pentecostals, 1031 Mill Street, P.O. Box 477, New Madrid, Missouri, 63869. And then we have the gold pans for tithing and then the wood pans for offering get the prayer up oh, hallelujah Don't, doesn't it feel so good to be in the presence of the Lord tonight Amen. hallelujah I believe we're I believe we're gonna experience something great tonight upon the authority of your word I have given and it shall be given unto me pressed down shaking together and running over I am a tither and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, Debts demolished and royalties received. My whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in and I am blessed going out. And all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen.
How many times I've told myself that I'm not turning back. No matter what comes my way, I'm going to follow Jesus. No matter what trial, I'm going to get my focus on the above. No matter the tribulation, I'm going to choose holiness. I'm going to choose righteousness. I'm going to choose to focus on just things and honest things. I'm going to focus on that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to re getting ready to dismiss uh, our kids now. We have Riverbend kids can line up front. Before all the kids come up, I want to remind you, you can go ahead and be seated, I guess. Half of them was started, so uh, sorry about that, brother. VBS is next week. It kicks off Saturday with a fun day. And these kids and, and, and all of us, tell everybody you know, all right? All the kids in your neighborhood, your grandkids, great-grandkids, wish you was they, they was your grandkids, wish you was their grandma, aunts and uncles. Um, I want to say entice them to come with candy and ice cream and stuff, you know, whatever. But we need a house full of children here for VBS, amen? <laughs> We're happy to tell you we are presently scheduled Unless something changes, we're going to baptize three more Sunday. Amen. And uh, two of them are in our children's group. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? So make sure we have a lot of kids here because we get them full of the Holy Ghost right now and get them discipled. We're sure enough going to turn the world upside down. Amen. Chris, Lynn, you want to go ahead and lead them back? River being ignited. And I'm going to give it over to Brother GL. I believe he has something powerful for us tonight. And I'm ready to learn and I'm ready to see what he has for us. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Blake. Didn't he do a good job for us tonight? Amen. Blake don't know it, but he's kind of like our ace in the hole for evangelism. Because when word gets out that he's home from school and in church all the time, probably going to have lots of young ladies trying to turn religious. Amen. Amen. Hey, I'm cool with it. Y'all cool with that? Amen. We'll get them here. We try to get them full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We just got to get them here. I'm just funning. Please don't get on Facebook and say, Pastor's 
pimping Blake out for evangelism. Amen. Well, I'm glad to be here tonight, aren't you? Man. My goodness gracious, I'm excited about what God is doing. Now, I wanted to have a handout for you tonight, but I do not have one, um, and I'm not sorry. I've uh, uh, been in class for a few days, and so um, time's been a little tight, but uh, uh, I, I, may, I thought about making a handout. If you like the teaching when it's done, and you think I ought to make you a handout, well, just text me, and I'll build you one. But uh, um, this is uh, just some pretty practical teaching um, from the book of James. The book of James is generally thought to be the oldest of the New Testament books. Um, it is a book that deals with practical aspects of Christian living, which is primarily how you live between services. Anybody, we're not living for God at church. Matter of fact, this is kind of supposed to be rest. We live for God all the rest of the time. So it deals with practical aspects. You want to find some of should I do this or should I not, a lot of it in the book of James. The author, I've always thought this was kind of neat. The author is widely considered to be James, not the disciple James, but James who was the half-brother of Jesus Christ, meaning he was a natural son of Joseph and Mary. And he is a very strong central figure in the New Testament and in New Testament history. He probably figures most prevalently in the book of Acts, chapter number 15, in case you want to read it. But uh, it is by many referred to as the Proverbs of the New Testament. Now, the book of Proverbs is an incredible book. All right? It has 31 chapters in it, and it is a good habit to begin to just read a chapter of the book of Proverbs every day and the 31-day months, you'll get it all the way through. The 30-day months almost, and then in February, you can just read it all extra or what have you. But Proverbs. Proverbs is, for the most part, to, considered to have been written by Solomon, who, according to God, was what? The wisest man that ever lived. Now, to ask for wisdom and an understanding heart appeals to God. Brother Jerry, I don't really know that we think very often how our request in prayer make the Lord feel. But when you pray and ask God to give you wisdom, makes him proud. Okay? So what should you be thinking right now? might not be a bad idea to incorporate a petition for wisdom in my prayer. But what we're going to do tonight is make sure that that wisdom is calibrated according to Scripture. Okay? Because we also learn from Solomon that an improper exercise of wisdom, are you ready now? Anybody know why Solomon got messed up? He fell in love with women from all over the place. Anybody want to know how he got connected to women from all over the place? Because his wisdom drew him there. So a, we need to learn tonight how to handle the wisdom God gives us in the appropriate manner. The improper exercise of that wisdom can lead to a compromised commitment, which leads to a compromised value system, which leads ultimately to a compromised heart, which results in separation from God. 
And we don't want that. Now, the practical teaching of the book of James, seeing it is the oldest, and when I say the oldest, I mean the first one written in the New Testament. It gives us a glimpse into the internal challenges that the early church faced. It was written within the first 15 years after Jesus was crucified, rose again, and ascended into heaven. We don't have an exact date, but there are events that begin to happen in 49 AD that are not mentioned or referred to in the book of James, and they would have been. So... Um, when the Lord inspires teaching, now I, I wish I did write this down and give it to you, but you can, you can write it down or like uh, Lacey told me today, she can't take notes in the middle of service because she gets lost. So she just listens and enjoys it, then goes home and takes notes. That may not be a bad pattern to follow. I'm going to tell the praise team, tone it down a little bit because if you make them do too much, I lose them during Bible study. No, I'm just teasing. That was a great job, great spirit. When the Lord inspires teaching or preaching, it's for a reason. And it requires a response. I'm going to say that again. When the Lord inspires teaching or preaching, it is for a reason and requires a response. Now, there are two levels of response. One is a reactive response, which means what? There's a reason why you need to react to it. means it hit me. It spoke to me, it ministered to me, or as most probably happens, convicted me. Because condemnation does not come from the word of God. All right? So that's a reactive response, meaning I heard the preaching or I heard the teaching and it started pointing out some stuff in my mind, in my life, etc. that that I need to make a change. How many are glad that the Lord does that? Amen. And as you, I feel Jesus right now, as you mature in your Christian walk, you learn to be comforted when that happens. Why? Why? Because the book says he chastens those that he loves. So in a manner of speaking, if the Lord cares enough to chasten you, you must be within a close enough reach of his will that that chastening puts you where you're supposed to be. Make sense? Okay. And it's a it calls for, remember the word, it either calls for a reactive response or a proactive response, which means in case I face this going forward, I'm now ready. So it'll hit you where you live or it'll prepare you to keep living. Isn't that beautiful? You know what's got covered then? Everything. Say, well, what about my past? The blood of Jesus is for that. Now, regarding these challenges, and remember, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, I don't really want to debate this a whole lot or talk about it. I don't really want any comments, but they're in the New Testament, but they're not New Testament books. All right? They are written under the law. They are biographical in nature, primarily the life of Jesus Christ and the assembling together of the disciples in preparation for the church to be built. All right? 
So we learn about the life of Jesus, the plans of Jesus, and the assembling of the disciples in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In the book of Acts, we learn how to get saved. Romans through Jude are teaching us how to stay saved. They are written to believers. Are you understanding me? They are written to people who have already been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name, and have repented of their sins. They are written for the perfecting, the completing. Teach us, we learn about Jesus, we learn how to get saved, we learn how to stay saved, and then in Revelation we learn what? Why we need to be saved. <laughs> huh? Because there's a heaven to gain, and a hell to shun. Everybody all right? So this early church is facing some challenges and James writes a letter to deal with them. Now, James chapter one and verse number five says, now I want you to be very careful in trying to discern this scripture because it's really, really, really deep. Actually, it's incredibly simple with only one section that needs to be expounded upon. If any of you, who's it written to? Believers, church folks, people that have already been born again of the water and the spirit. If any of you lack wisdom, look here, you ready for this? Let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally. Now what do we learn right then? Anybody can ask for it and anybody can get it. But if you want it, you gotta ask. You do not receive wisdom from osmosis. You know what that means? hanging around wise people and hoping it rubs off on you. We got to ask, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. Now I'm going to just go out on a limb and say, I'm not going to have anybody say, hey, I know what that means. Okay? That's a good thing because I'm about to tell you. Now, I want you to catch this. This is very important right now. This is, this is very, very important, and it is deep, and we have to come to this realization. So if any of you lack wisdom, meaning I need some of this wisdom, ask God because he's the one that gives it to everybody liberally, which we understand from the Scripture is everybody who asks, Right? And upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Now, that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not are characteristics of God. Right? Right? If we lack wisdom, we ask, that's us, and we ask the one that gives it to everybody liberally and upbraideth not. Now I'm trying to get this upbraideth not in our heads because it's so important. Now the wisdom that it's talking about is heavenly wisdom that lends itself, this is a definition, heavenly wisdom that lends itself to establishing our latter end, which in Plain terminology is wisdom that will help me establish my eternal destiny. Because getting filled with the Holy Ghost, be it repenting, being baptized in Jesus' name, and being filled with the Holy Ghost is not the summit of your life. There's a reason, Brother David, why it's referred to as being born again. 
Because it is the beginning of your new life. So that's why we got to be very careful to stop celebrating when people repent. We should celebrate that. Be baptized in Jesus' name, we should celebrate that. Be filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, we should celebrate that. We should also celebrate when they lack wisdom and ask God and get it. We celebrate growth. Say, well, what about, I mean, you go around telling everybody that you grew. Let me tell you something, honey. It shows. You can't hide it. If you've been showing up looking like somebody stole your Cheerios and you show up grinning from ear to ear like a mule eating briars, shouting when you ain't supposed to, everybody knows you've already grown in the Lord. I know that's an oversimplification, Brother Jerry, but it's just the way it works. Okay, now look at here. So this is heavenly wisdom we're talking about that lends itself to establishing our latter end. That's what the definition said, lends itself to establishing our, because the book does tell us make your calling and election sure. sure. That, that's our responsibility. There's not any more for the Lord to do. He's done give us everything we need. He did everything we need on Calvary, in the grave, and when he ascended, and he gave us everything we need in the word. I, I want that to be very clear. All right? And if somebody, even an angel from heaven, comes trying to tell you something different than what's already been given you, shoot him in the behind with some double alt buckshot because he's a liar and trying to trick you. God giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. Now we get to find out what that means. It means without regard for their faults or without fault finding. What does that mean? Be ready to follow me, Brother Skipper, because I might get out, just get out here a little bit tonight. I want everybody to be comfortable. It means that when you come to God and say, I'm lacking in the wisdom area and I need it, he will give it to you liberally, which means freely, and I think, Miss Jane, lends itself to the idea of uh, abundantly or bountifully, more than enough. He's not like, well, how much do you need? Let me see if I can ration it out. There's no ration in it, Brother David, because he is I am, and it's coming from the very, it's coming from the very bosom of God. It's not like he's manufacturing this wisdom. This wisdom's part of him. Okay? And upbraideth not without regard for our faults. He does, when you come to the Lord asking for this wisdom, he does not try to determine if you're worthy of it or not. He will give it to you. Why is he not concerned with our faults? There are two reasons why the Lord doesn't even concern it. It says, upbraideth not, literally means doesn't try to find a fault in the one that's asking. Now, Here's, there are two reasons why the Lord does not concern himself with our faults when we come to him and ask for wisdom. All right? The first one is the fact that we are aware that we're lacking in that area and that we're asking God to fill that area testifies to the condition of our heart. If you're not interested in getting that wisdom from God, you're not asking for it. I don't, I, 
That's why the Lord doesn't waste any time trying to figure out if you've got something messed up in you because if you're asking God for this, he knows you're headed in the right direction. That's the number one reason. And the number two reason is when you get baptized with a liberal dose of wisdom, whatever's messed up in you is soon going to be corrected. Is that not you? Does it make, make sense? Yes. I'm asking for the right thing. That tells the Lord, even though I might be a little sideways in my mind or my heart or my body, I'm headed in the right direction and I want the right thing. So he ain't concerned about what might be messed up in me. And he knows as soon as I get it, I'm going to have what I need to get everything that's wrong in me fixed. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? So what's that designed to do? It's designed to be a deterrent to somebody that says, I believe I'm lacking wisdom, but I'm also lacking in some more areas. We should just say, I'm going to put them on the shelf right now. I'm going to go after this wisdom. And when I get it, then I can start getting perfected in these other areas. You with me? Receiving the wisdom that comes from God has got to be a priority to anybody in pursuit of a deeper relationship with God. Any questions or comments? Any thoughts? Anybody totally lost? Wave at me. I'll do it again. I got to go nowhere. You understand I don't really know, Brother David, why that concerns us. We still, some of us are hung up in our minds on we got to get to a certain place of perfection before the Lord will do anything for us. This scripture destroys any credibility that that opinion might have. Is that fair? Is that fair? The Lord doesn't say, if any of you lack wisdom and have found your way to perfection, Ask me and I'll give it to you. But he's saying, as you're growing in the Lord and you realize you've got some chinks in your armor and you've got some hiccups in your system, that if you come to the Lord seeking for wisdom, he will show you what's wrong. Amen. Now, now, hear me right now. The re and I'm, I'm butting up against something a little bit right now, so I'm going to tear it down. The reason why that that frustrates some of us a little bit is because we like being the one that gets to evaluate whether they get it or not. All right. Right. Uh, oh, we're about to get there. Here's, here's the deal, Brother Ronnie, and I'm not being ugly, but if you've got an issue with pride in this, you're asking for the wrong thing anyway. I'm, I'm going to get there in just a minute, but I want you to be filing that away. That's a great comment that you just made. Yes, sir. I think you might be seeing it right. Right. And he wants to learn how to pray. So he wants the wisdom of God. Right, right. That's right. If he don't ask me and he does something wrong, and to be upgraded means to scold or abuse him. Yeah. And not upgraded means just not. Yeah, which is basically meaning the Lord, you say, I need some wisdom, and the Lord say, I'm not going to hurt you. Who do you think you are asking me for wisdom? We know how jacked up you are. That's what that upbraideth means, to scold like, what in the world? Who do you think you are asking me for wisdom? He's not going to do that. His wisdom's perfect, but that, that's a good... Illustration. Yes, it is. Yeah. Now, come on, Brother Ronnie. You want to teach this for me? 
No, you're exactly right. You're just getting a little bit ahead. We got to get it established. Even if I'm not arrived yet, the Lord is telling me in his word, let's get together on this wisdom and I'll bring you where you need to be when I get the right stuff in you. The Lord doesn't say, man, you got a lot of want to. I don't have time to teach you right now, but get in that rig and spray. Well, what do I spray with? I don't care. How do I? I don't care. You just want to, so let's do it. No. No. But the Lord recognizes that our want to is essential, but we got to get things in the right priority. So let's deal with it in the proper. Starts with an O, and I preach about it all the time. Order, and the proper order is, I'm lacking in the wisdom area. Okay. Sure. Say that one more time. Sure, wisdom in its, in its simplest form is the proper application of knowledge. So you can know the Bible backwards and forwards and not be able to apply it. Okay, that is wisdom in its simplest form is the proper application of knowledge. Because it doesn't do Brother Billy one bit of good to put Brother Shannon through about three weeks of intensive training how to drive the sprayer and Brother Shannon shows up for work that first Monday and Brother Billy says, get in the water truck. You're my water man. What you mean I'm your water man? You understand? God ain't working like that either. I mean, I ain't throwing no rocks at Brother Billy, but the Lord's a lot smarter than him. Brother Billy knows better than to do something like that. All right, I'll fix the move and groove a little bit. Now, the only place, the only place we can receive the gift of wisdom or any other gift, for that matter, spiritually speaking, is from heaven. Only place. Because James 1 and 17 says, every good and perfect gift comes from above. From the Father of lights, who's that? God, how do we know? He's the one said, let there be, and it was. He hung the sun and the moon out there and the stars. Revelation comes from him. That's light. He said, I'm the light of the world. Then he said, you're the light of the world. You know how I get there, Brother Larry? Learning it tonight. Because that wisdom, that proper application of knowledge, where is it found for me best at? In Jesus Christ. Because, Brother Billy, you're right. He was perfect. And Brother Larry, he said, in the world, you're going to have tribulation. But be of good cheer. Be happy. Put a smile on your face. Why? I've overcome the world. So when we run into an acknowledgement of a, didn't work right, what do we do? Ask him. Help me. I feel like there's a little bit of a naming spirit in here sometimes in, in the Pentecostal church where we think the man of God ought to come out and go, and all of a sudden we all wise. I mean, really? It's like, you mean I got to do something? Yes, you do. Say, well, how, how do I know what to do? You should have been here the last five Wednesdays because I taught you. It's 
That's what I'm talking about. I, I, baby got something to eat at the house. I'm ready to go. I'm done. Okay? Connect. He's the vine. We're the branches. He's the king that sits on the throne. Let's get him involved in our lives. Oh, Lord. Now, every good and perfect gift comes from the above and is given by the Father. So we know we want it. We got to get it from him. There is not another way. And if you try to get it another way, you're the same as a thief and a robber. Or as Simon in Acts chapter number 8 learned, you can't buy it. And if you try to buy it, you reveal your heart. Brother Ronnie, and your heart says, I want it, but I want a shortcut to it. And Peter, the man of God, will tell you just like he told Simon, well, you better get to repenting because your heart ain't right. That's what he told him. He said, I perceive you're in the bond of bitterness and gall, which is all pride, because you want the blessings of God and the power to lay hands on people and they get the Holy Ghost, but you want to do it your way. Same thing applies to wisdom. We're going to find out. You can get wisdom, Brother Kevin. You can get wisdom, but you can get it the wrong way for the wrong reasons, and it profits you nothing. I'm going to show you. Chapter 3. Man, this is frustrating. Anybody can get knowledge. You can get knowledge through natural means. Okay? Anybody studying get knowledge, wisdom is the practical application of that knowledge. Everybody can't do that. I mean, I can go to school for 10 years to learn how to build cabinets. You cannot walk out of that classroom and build a set of cabinets. Everybody that's coming out of that class is not going to be a cabinet maker. All right? So we can get all kinds of knowledge, but knowing what to do and doing it and doing it in the manner that pleases God, that's what we're interested in. Okay, chapter 3 of James is known by and large, for its clear teaching regarding the role that the mouth plays in the establishment of one's belief system. Very simply put, your mouth can make or break your witness in the kingdom of God, and your mouth can be the reason you miss out on heaven and have to go to hell. Okay. Thankfully, I ain't dealing with the mouth part tonight. Unless the Lord leads me back up there. And the only reason he'll lead me back up there is because somebody needs it. Come on, somebody now. I done taught you this. Tonight, we're going to deal with the last six verses of the chapter which in a manner of speaking feed off of James chapter 1 and verse number 5, which what does James 1 and 5 say? If you lack wisdom, anybody lacks wisdom, ask the Lord who giveth to all men liberally. That means he wants you to have it. And he ain't going to try to find your faults before he gives it to you. And it shall be given unto him. How do we know if we lack wisdom? How do you know if you're in lack? I once heard Brother Raymond Woodward say this. I want you to write this down if you got a pencil. Because I've wrestled this, hopefully for the last time as pastor. I heard Brother Raymond Woodward say regarding spiritual maturity, and I'm paraphrasing, but he said, as we mature in our relationship with God. We learn to move 
from asking, is this a heaven or hell issue? Or will doing this send me to hell? We move from that to asking this question. Anybody have an idea what it is? What am I teaching you about tonight? Is this wise? Because people always want, can I do this and still go to heaven? Guess what do we have if we're asking that, Brother Ronnie? A pride problem. Right? We're going to get, I hope we get there tonight. If I, I may have Brother Ronnie come teach it because he was about to. All right? We're about to hit that too. I'm going to put Brother Billy and Brother Ronnie in the corner because they ain't neither one of them got the patience enough to let this unfold here. <laughs> I'm just teasing. I love it when people are so connected that they're seeing it unfold before it does. Don't think I'm condemning these fellas. I'm not. Matter of fact, I'm th looking forward to the day when it all starts ching, 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 and we just explode. Because I'm telling you right now, you can ask my wife, when revelation starts flowing in my life, when I'm reading the Bible, I start making funny sounds. I start like, oh, my goodness, woo, you know, woo, baby, look at here, you know, like I slap the table, I'm like, What? Ain't that right, baby? When I'm here at the church by myself, Brother David, honest to goodness, I'll be here in my office and stuff will start flowing where I got to stop, lay my stuff down, and come out here and just walk a few circles in the church because I, it, it just wells up inside of you when, you when truth starts being revealed. And I want you to know it's happening in this room tonight. Is... This wise. If any of you at lack wisdom, ask and I'll give you what you need. The word liberally perhaps denotes an abundance. For those of you that don't think you're lacking or don't know if you're lacking, here's a litmus test, Brother Billy. Here's a test that will determine whether you're right or whether you're wrong. Remember, when you ask for wisdom with the right spirit, the right heart, and the right want to, God will give it to everybody liberally without even checking you out first. But, hang with me for just a few more minutes. But, if we're not asking... If we're not asking for wisdom, and if we're not asking, why are we not asking? We already know it. And I'm going to tell you something. You ever get to the place where you think you already know it? You better be hot footing it to the altar somewhere. Because you are about one more banana peel from slipping plumb off into the devil's playground. Yeah. All right? If we're not asking, there's an issue, there's a problem. But the Bible gives us a test to put ourselves to. Now, that's very important right now. And I'm going to move along, and I'm probably not going to get done tonight. So I'm probably going to have to make a handout or I may have to do it online or finish it or something. But I want you to know this word, this was a revelation that came to me tonight. Brother David, I have always confused the intent of the word of God, always, till today. I'm just going to be really transparent with you. I have always assumed that in a court, not till today, but in the last week, I have always assumed that part of the responsibility of delivering the word was making sure the word was received the way it was supposed to. 
and then school marming it with my grade book. Like if I teach, don't be mean to waiters and waitresses, and Monday night you post on Facebook how you got only a three quarters of a large Coke instead of to the brim, and you ain't never going back again, then I think they ain't listening to nothing I'm preaching. But I realized something in the last, y'all feel me right now? Boy, I, I'm all sitting in a corner somewhere holding on to my little blanket, you know, you know, like Brother Arnold says, I need to turn my resignation in and get a real job. Okay? That's not my job. Here's what we have to, we have to do. The preacher and the receiver. You take the word. You look in the mirror of it. And you determine. Is he talking to me? And when you determine, yep. He's talking to me. That's when you start going down through your notes. Thank you for doing that, Sister Tina. When you start going down through your notes and you school marm yourself. How do I line up with the word? Go ahead. Yep. Yep. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. But that's pride in the same way. That's that's still pride. Because remember, pride can be I think I'm too good, or I think I'm not good enough. It's still pride. All right. In this case. I, 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 I can't pretend, I can't let everybody see that I'm not as smart as everybody thinks I am. Yeah, no, no, you, you, you go right ahead. You go right ahead. So if we're not asking, the Lord says in James the thir 3 and 13, here we are, Brother Billy, who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Who is it that's wise and, and, and full of knowledge? Who is it that's not lacking? Right? He said, let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Look at here. Self, that's why I was leading you here. Self-determination is necessary in accord with the word of God. Do I need this word? Nobody can determine that but you or God. Good. That's good. That's good. Yes, sir. You can, but undoubtedly there must be some people in the church that didn't think that way. You want to know how I know that? Because the Lord told James to talk to him about it. Right? So, I think you're right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. The only one that can decide if I'm lacking is me. If I'm lacking wisdom, I'm the only one that can decide that. Now, the truth is, most of the time, by the time we realize it, everybody else done knowed it. Because we've done proved it to them that we wasn't as smart as we thought we was. We didn't have as much. Am I telling you the truth? How many can testify about that in your own life? You're looking at him. He said, here's how you know if you're the wise man endued with knowledge. Prove it by 
the way you live your life. That good conversation, I taught you this in elements. What's that mean? The way you live, the manner of life. Now, I told Miss Jane and Angie this the other day, and I'm, I'm going to remind you of it again. We're about to get into the area why a whole lot of theologians want to take the book of James out of the Bible because it'll hurt your feelings. It's true. It was the last book. It's the oldest book and the last book to be a part of the canon. Anybody know what the canon is? That, that is the Bible, the canonized books. It was the last one because, Brother David, they couldn't agree on it. You know why they couldn't agree on it? Because it has too much of a demand for works. It's true. You can look it up. It talks too much about works to a religious world that wants grace to fix our pride and our fear. Yes, sir. Uh huh. Yep. Right. 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 And the Queen of Sheba said, Oh, they bragged on you. But they couldn't tell half of how good it really is. That's when you step over from telling them about church to getting them there. Huh? Yes, ma'am. You, you're right. You won't. We, none of us will. But we get cold in the Lord. The colder we get, the smarter we think we are. Because the first thing we'll tell ourselves, when you get cold in the Lord, Brother Brando, I ain't going to get done tonight, but I'm doing a good job. All right? You know what the first thing's going to happen when you get smart enough, to be, when you get cold enough in the Lord to get wisdom? I don't really need to go to church. Start slacking and slacking. I, I don't really need to pray every day. Right. I, I don't need to go to prayer meeting. Right. Well, I'm too tired. Besides that, I've, I've done heard that all my life. You know what, Brother Billy, you talked about Brother McKinney? Boy, I'm fixing to make you mad right now because it made me mad. I wanted to fight telling you the truth because Brother McKinney taught the word. He taught the word. He didn't go a whole lot of elaborate, a whole lot of, he just taught the word. But according to some people, he taught the word too much. And they came to me and said, let me tell you something, don't try this with me. Your feelings going to get hurt. They came to me and said, do you think he's figured out that we know enough about one God that we want to hear something else? So, Sister Fran, guess what happened? They got wise. You hear what I'm saying, Brother Billy? Oh, we done heard that so much. We don't need to hear that no more. I'm telling you, this is true. It's not hypothetical. It's true. So, I'm not trouble. No, I'm not troublemaking. I'm trying to let us know. Sister Nadine just quoted it a while ago. Let him that think he standeth take heed lest he fall. Nobody falls out of the church screaming, I didn't know enough. I didn't have enough Holy Ghost. They fall out of the church saying, man, that ain't necessary. I don't need to live that way. I don't need to do that. You know what? I, I'm not even sure if that Bible's true. All right. Yes, ma'am.
Well, because as Brother Ronnie shared with us, we're saying we're wise, but in our heart we're saying, if I know that, then I become responsible for that. Let me see here real quick. Because I'm, I'm not going to get done. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as gods. Anybody like to take a guess where that came from? That's a speech that the devil gave to Eve in the middle of convincing her that she really was smart as God. All she needed was the fruit to make it come to pass. Now, let me finish this right here, and I'm going to call it a night. I'm going to come back to this. We're not having Wednesday night next week because of VBS. We're not having Bible study. We're still having Wednesday night. But let him show out of a good manner of life, a good conduct, his works. Look here. With the humility, here's where we get messed up. Because anybody can do the good works. But if you do it in the flesh, you know how you tell off on yourself? Look what I did. Can't keep from it. Say, how do you know? I done been down that road. Can't keep from it. Some of the hardest battles I've ever been in in my life is letting the Lord take credit for the good things he did through me. Because yeah. right. if the devil can't stop the good thing from happening through me, then he can destroy its effectiveness by getting me to take credit for it. So the way that I show is the way I live do good, do right, be holy, live according to the word of God with humility. Look here. That comes from wisdom. So you see, it all feeds off of one another. Because if pride is my issue, Brother David or Brother Ronnie, and I come to the Lord asking for wisdom with the right heart, because I recognize that every time something good starts happening, I want to take credit for it. And you know something the Word tells me about that, Brother Jerry? Ain't wise. Oh, this ain't rocket science. If I start behaving in a way contrary to what I know to be right, Brother David, you know what I got to do? I got to go to the Lord and say, it needs wisdom. Need a fill up, need a check up, need a redo, overhaul, something, because I'm about to get out of control. You say, well, what happens if you don't? You don't want to know. Because you're going to get into a place, hear me right now, hear this preacher. You're going to get to a place where you no longer know right from wrong, and your conscience will be seared with a hot iron. And because you, hear me right now, this is the book, because you receive not a love for the truth, God will send you a strong delusion. You will believe a lie and be damned. Say, oh man, this, this is serious business. I'd say it was. Now I didn't get over, we're going to talk, we, we, there's envy and strife and that's going to get where Brother Ronnie was trying to take us a while ago. Because with wisdom that comes from the earth comes envy and strife. And then you say dumb things like John Lennon in about 1978 or 79, the Beatles are more popular than Jesus Christ. Look it up. He said it. Let me tell you something. There ain't but one king that sits on the throne. And it's not only time, but it's high time that the church acknowledge him as such. And realize I can't live this life 
without his input. And according to the word, his input is called wisdom, and it's wisdom that comes from heaven, not the earth. That's why you can get somebody, and I don't mean to be ugly, but I'm just going, this is not meant to be an insult, but I have witnessed a young man that could not read be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and preach the gospel and read the text word for word and go to school and couldn't read still until he opened the Bible. Amen. And all of a sudden, he could read. Because wherever you're lacking, the Lord wants to fix it. And the first place we start hunting to be fixed is to know how to drive the spray rig the right way with the right chemical, the right speed, in the right direction, in the right conditions. There's a lot more to it than just getting on it because that's what it looks like to me. When I see them in the field riding a spray rig, it looks like it's fun. Get on it. It's like a big wheel on steroids. Now, if you ain't never rode a big wheel, you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> Looks to me like they sit in that little bug, put the hammer down, and get on their phone. There's a lot more to it than that. There's a whole lot more to it than just showing up and getting a little spillover from somebody else's shout. There's a lot more to it than just showing up and punching the clock and saying, I was there. But the Lord came into the house, Brother Cody, to empower and mobilize people and put us out there, look here, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. But it begins in a prayer room on your knees saying, Lord, I need wisdom. Lord Jesus, stand with me if you would. Lord Jesus, I love you tonight, and I really appreciate you, and I'm thankful for your word. And I'm thankful that I'm learning that you want good things for me more than I want them for myself. And you want me to be successful in living for you. And when I'm successful in living for you, I'll be successful in every area of my life. God, I don't like not knowing what to do. I don't like know, not knowing and not doing the right thing because I reap destruction and I reap uh, cares and I, I reap uh, stress and I reap chaos when I try to do it myself, when, I, when I'm a little too proud or a little too fearful to say, Lord, I need you. But I got to do it, and I got to be willing to do it in front of people, and I got to be willing to, to do it before you, and I got to be willing to not care if hell even knows that I'm weak and that I need you. So, Lord, I pray that everybody under the sound of my voice, everybody, whether they're watching us online or in the house, everybody recognizes and realizes that I need to be both full and hungry at the same time. I can be doing really good where I'm at, but I got to be aware that there's more. Lord, I don't want to grow cold in you. I don't want to grow cold in you. I don't want to grow to a place where the, the, the carnal mind, Lord God, have mercy. To be carnally minded is death. I don't want to die a spiritual death. I don't want to die a spiritual death and have the devil and his imps laughing at me and dancing at me and using me as something to get back at the Lord. No, 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 Lord. Line me up. Straighten me up. Up, uh, help me, Lord God, to live what I preach and live what I believe. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Team number two this week, BBS is July 19th through the 22nd, ages 4 to 11. Fun day is the 17th, bouncy houses, etc. going to be a lot of fun. And... Uh, uh, going to be a short meeting after church tonight to discuss the final VBS plans, I'm assuming, in the Family Center. No regular Bible study Wednesday night, July the 21st. That is the only service that will not be having regular church the rest of this year pending the weather. All right? 
We're, we're going to be here, and we're, we're having church that night. It's just VBS. So y'all come. Okay? We better support our kids at this. If we follow them, and I've done it, i followed them to ballparks all over the country. If I can do that, I better make sure they get to the house of God. So, need volunteers for Saturday. Please see Sister Casey or Sister Kim. Youth trip to Pigeon Forge, July the 28th, 29th, and 30th. If you want to receive church text, please see Sister Amanda. Are some of the shirts here tonight, Sister Amanda? They're not? Okay. Shirts are about to be done, though. Some, the polo shirts are. The baseball tees are a little bit coming. Please pray for the sick. Pray for those that are struggling. When you get a text message, pray for them. Yeah. Right then. It's okay to say, pray for them right then. Yes, ma'am. All right. We'll pray for Sister Carolyn as we're dismissed. Yes, ma'am. Good, good, good. Well, she's very welcome. And uh, we love Sister Barker and Sister Virginia. Uh, they're... They both of them, both of them, when I go see them, both of them can't tell me enough how bad they miss church. They'd give anything to be in the house of God. Don't take this for granted. The wisest thing you can do is be faithful to the house of God. Love you. Take the word with you. We'll work on a handout for next week. Any more announcements? God bless you. You're dismissed. <laughs>